Hi and welcome to today's video. My name is Rita and this is my channel 10 Red Lipsticks. Usually we talk about makeup but today we're going to talk about money. Not my favourite topic but let's give it a go. So I have to wear my glasses. Apologies about the shadows and the shadows in general. It's the evening. I've got a bunch of uh, lights trying to help me out. It's not perfect. Also weird filming location. I'm like sitting on the floor in front of the a bookshelf in our living room, pipe cleaners to literally clean a pipe, cigar humidor, books, political and not DVDs. It's a whole collection of random stuff. If I didn't film until I fixed up my room the way I like it, my desk, etc., then it might be months. So I'm hoping that this series of videos will assist me to kickstart uh, my plans to fix up the room and be able to film in a more comfortable location where we'll have a similar background every month but we're not quite there yet we had to move twice we've just moved back to our house blah blah boring but um yeah we're just not fully settled back in yet so you get to see some of my books and judge me on that basis so today I am introducing my low buy for 2024. I've done several kind of casual no buy, low buy um, challenges, specific plans of, you know, limiting particular categories or the numbers in particular categories of makeup in particular. But across my life in general, overspending is an issue and impulse shopping is an issue. Apologies if you can hear birds in the background. That's what they do. Um, so this is something I've tried to address in a more casual way and I think I need to get more serious about it if I want to address it in a more serious way. So I wouldn't say that my spending is completely out of control. I've set, you know, particular rules in the past that I have followed, but I've also set guidelines that I've completely broken through several times. And I think that is an indication there's a serious problem. So we'll get into the heavy stuff first and then the I think fun stuff of the rules and parameters I've set out for myself. So this year I did I watched a lot of Hannah Louise Poston's original No Buy Year playlist which is her first year on YouTube. She documented very thoroughly her No Buy experience or a replacement only No Buy is what she was on um, for makeup so she bought very little makeup just mascara I think um, and skincare was a big issue for her um, that is something I'm open to um, however I think based on where I live <laughs> I make excuses for myself which I'll explain in a bit um, I really wouldn't enjoy that and while I think it's an issue I need to address I'm not sure that that kind of step is necessary certainly in the long term um, and while I do have too much in many many categories I would have to replace some skincare etc certainly within a year Um, so you know yeah it's something I've considered and I'm not going for it at this stage perhaps month-long no buys etc will feature in this project and um, which I am looking forward to so far what's it the 6th of January I haven't bought anything and um, not that that's difficult but you know what I mean uh, so we'll see how that goes so that has been definitely an influence on this project I've watched a lot of other people you know beauty bank videos low buy videos no buy videos um, and gotten a lot of inspiration from that. I have watched some minimalists etc and in general like I'm a messy person I like having a lot of stuff that's my happy vibe in terms of in terms of how I want my home to be etc um, but it it's so easy to get overwhelmed uh, so I am overwhelmed by the amount of stuff I have in my home not particularly makeup, mostly because makeup is small and um, it doesn't take up that much physical space in and of itself. Um, the having over 100 eyeshadow palettes, you know, when I try and think about it can be a little overwhelming, but I'm not like, oh God, there's makeup everywhere. I'm not feeling that at all. But with other categories like clothes, like 
dishes in my kitchen. I am feeling that. Oh God, there's stuff everywhere. How can I deal with all of this stuff? Um, and I'm a big fan of uh, Dana from A Slab Comes Clean, Dana K. White and her books and Dawn from The Minimalist Mom and Cass from Clutterbug and their kind of theories and ideas and strategies about cleaning, uh, organising, decluttering and trying to limit the stuff that comes into your life, the physical stuff that comes into your life and becomes your responsibility to own, deal with, clean and eventually get rid of. Um, I'm not a minimalist, I'm never going to be a minimalist but I like Dana's theory about uh, your clutter threshold um, and I definitely haven't reached my clutter threshold. In other words, not owning more stuff that you can manage. So if you're very good at organising, if your mental library of everything that you own is accurate and you don't get overwhelmed by the fact that there's stuff at the back of your shelves that you can't see when you open your closet or when you open the cupboard in your kitchen, if you still remember that stuff is there, then possibly you can manage that stuff. I can't really remember that all of that stuff is there. I'm very visual. I like visual abundance, being able to see lots of things. Um, but it is overwhelming to me that, you know, I just forget things exist. Things I love. Um, and then I'll have to go because, you know, something spills in that cupboard or... I've lost something I really need, like, you know, something essential like a passport or something like, I don't know, my choir uniform or a particular coat that I need for a particular occasion and I'll have to search thoroughly. And while I'm doing that, I won't just find the thing I'm looking for. I'll also find other hidden gems. And that's a problem. You know, being overwhelmed. I can't remember everything I own. Stuff is hidden at the back. That's an issue. So I would prefer for my clutter threshold level, I think, to be able to open a wardrobe, open a cupboard and see everything that's in there, which means there actually has to be less in there. Um, so, you know, you can't have stuff on top of stuff. You have to just have one layer of products or items or clothes or dishes, whatever it is. So yeah, I will link those uh, three people below. It's not about makeup, it's about life in general. Uh, keeping your house clean etc but it's kind of a journey I've been on of decluttering and trying to sort myself out um, throughout the years and obviously I've been making makeup focused videos not a huge number of them but I'm going to be more consistent this year and certainly talking about makeup on Instagram and I've bought a lot of makeup in the last few years this is an area where my spending is particularly out of control but when I have successfully attempted to limit my overspending on makeup in the past, I have sometimes fallen into the trap of overspending on other fun categories. So for example, if I'm only allowed to spend X number of euro a month on makeup or per week on makeup, but I want to make an order and I won't get to the minimum spend to get affordable shipping or free shipping, staying within my budget of spending what I'm spending on makeup I would do things like get up to the free shipping minimum by buying makeup brushes which I do not need makeup bags which I do not need or other accessories or additional non-makeup items to technically stay within my low buy rules at that stage but not within the spirit of the rules which was to curb my overspending in general so this year I want to do a more detailed project. I've set out a plan for the whole year. I'm not sure how well I'll be able to stick to it, um, but I really want to try. One of the issues for me is just my life, you know, I do shift work, so I am in work at random times and I'm off work at random times. So I find it challenging to stay connected with all the good people in my life that I love and want to stay connected to. Because obviously, if they work normal jobs, they want to socialise on weekends. And sometimes the only time I can really socialise is noon on a Tuesday. Um, so I find that quite challenging and I've definitely experienced quite a bit of loneliness since I've taken this job where I do shift work and I've also moved only a little bit but like just a bit out of the city that I'm from. So all of my friends are st or most of my friends are still in that city, my family etc are in 
Dublin and I live in Kildare. Um, so the two issues combine to mean that I haven't been socialising as much as certainly I would like to and as much as I did before. I'm definitely an extrovert. I love connecting with people, etc. Um, I did before A, COVID and B, making those moves in my life. So loneliness has been an issue and, you know, you don't need anybody with you for the hobby of shopping. So that has been something that I think I've used a little bit as a coping mechanism to deal with the fact that I am lonely and I don't see the opportunities I want to see for fun activities out of the house that I maybe in the past would have met up with a friend for lunch or something. And um, now I'm going to TK Maxx by myself and spending 45 minutes looking through every category in the shop that I'm interested in, in extreme detail. Do I per se want to never do that again? No, but that's not the kind of positive activity that supports me as a person that socialising with a friend is, or other positive activities. So I definitely want to try and adjust on that front and for example you know making videos this hobby and um, Instagram whatever um, I can do on my own but actually is much more socially connected to other people which I find better for myself also it's a creative outlet etc um, and while it's not free because I do for example buy I do pay for a an editing program a very 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 basic editing program um, like the Microsoft one I just pay the um, subscription to I don't know let you do something that I wasn't able to do before I can't even remember maybe make longer videos or something I don't know um so I'm paying a small amount for this hobby I'm not paying like outrageous amounts for this hobby and then winding up with a bunch of stuff in my house that yeah I like but then I have to deal with and manage and eventually get rid of um so yeah I think this is a more positive uh when I'm a bit lonely and don't have the opportunities to connect with other people that I would like to immediately way to spend my time and can possibly be a good replacement for the shopping hobby that I have had my whole life and in a way haven't a fundamental problem with because I would rather personally spend time perusing, enjoying the experience of seeing what's on offer and then get a great deal on a thing I really love than just, you know, order the first thing that comes up and I certainly I just I do not enjoy online shopping in the way I enjoy shopping in a shop like in person in a store um so yeah uh there's a whole thing there anyway um I think that it would be a much more positive for me outlet when I am a bit lonely and would like to uh, do something, do a hobby to uh, do this. So yeah, that's the heavy stuff. It's not necessarily the absolute heaviest situation. Please don't let my computer have died because I had to unplug the charger to plug in the light, which is weird. It's like shining at the floor to make, anyway, it's improving the light balance. So we'll take it. We'll take it. So the fun bit, let's get into the parameters. So essentially what I'm doing is kind of a beauty budget, but it's not limited to beauty. I'm going to talk about the different categories. Um, I have some general guidelines first off. In general, I would like to have a quality over quantity approach. I definitely have a scarcity mindset. Part of that is being plus size. Um, like it has many, 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 many times come up in my life that I need something. I need a replacement pair of jeans because I have had chub rub, thigh rub, whatever, uh, eat away at the material right in between my legs and my only pair of jeans is falling to pieces and not fit uh, to be seen in decent company. I have had that experience several times. I've had the experience where I need, you know, a uniform piece for a club that I'm in or a choir or whatever. You know, everybody needs a navy skirt. Everybody needs plain black trousers. Everybody needs to buy a red jumper, whatever. 
and I have struggled to find that item because I'm not the standard size. That has happened so many times that it's imprinted in my brain, this scarcity mindset. Um, but I'm not in the same financial position that I was 10 years ago when, or 15 years ago when those of those experiences would have happened. A. B. Things have improved. The fashion industry, like this multi- national conglomerate of uh, making women feel bad about themselves, uh, killing the environment and um, horrifically oppressing the workers who are actually making the garments um, is an evil monster and irredeemable in many ways. But things have diversified and the average size has increased a bit. Um, for example, I can walk into say pennies even though I'm bigger now than I would have been 10 years ago or whatever when pennies didn't it, it, like my size was the biggest size and while I couldn't get everything I can't buy bras and pennies for example which is Primark by the way um I can't buy a lot of things because a lot of things come in like 8 10 12 bloody blast sizes normal sizes um and they just don't go up past 18. I can't buy those things because they don't go up big enough. But these things, like this is from Primark, um, go up to a 2XL, which does fit me. Now, it's generally more this kind of casual wear stuff. So I couldn't go in and buy like a business appropriate pencil skirt if I needed one. But I can go in and not be naked. So literally that's an improvement, <laughs> which might sound very uh, bad to straight sides people who've never, or who haven't much had that experience. Um, but also Marks and Spencers generally will have my size. It's a bit more expensive, but often the item is a higher quality than what I would have bought in the past in pennies, etc. So things have changed a little bit on that front. And I'm trying to get that into my brain of actually, yeah, you might have to spend a bit more than you want to, for, and particularly say everyone in work was told, oh, wear a red top tomorrow because we're fundraising for blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't really want to go out and spend more on the better quality red top if red tops weren't my thing. They happen to be my thing. I have a lot of them um, for something I'm only going to want to wear once. But you know what I mean? In general, I will often benefit from buying the higher quality thing um, and particularly in the things I really do need like the replacement jeans I really do want the higher quality thing because it takes longer for that problem to reoccur with the higher quality thing. So in general I'd like to go for quality over quantity in particular, I've realised like I've decluttered massively in the last few years in terms of my clothes and it has improved things. It's made it easier to decide what to wear every day because I'm not overwhelmed by these false choices like tops that are a little bit see through, tops that are too short, tops that are too low cut or high cut and they look weird on me, tops that you can see my bra and um, etc. They're not there as much in my collection of in my wardrobe um as they used to be no i i'm not i haven't achieved my goal um but it's improved a lot and it's great and um, i haven't fully decluttered for example i have some pairs of jeans that aren't my favorite the pair of jeans i'm wearing right now are fine but another pair of jeans that are the same company uh, are beginning to have that wearing away in between the legs problem so i don't regret not decluttering other jeans I have that aren't my favourite because I know I'm going to need those. I'm going to use those um, to death. So <laughs> I'm happy with that. So it's a bit of a balance. But in general, I would like to think, OK, I'm not going to just go out and buy this because, you know, this three pack of T-shirts is good value and I'm afraid I'll never find a T-shirt that fits me again. Instead, I would prefer not to clutter my house with three meh t-shirts and instead to buy one yay I love a t-shirt that suits my needs takes up less space in my home and makes me happier and gives me more of what I want from a purchase of a great t-shirt and sorry I'm saying great t-shirt I literally mean like spending 18 euro in Marks and Spencers instead of five euro in pennies so I'm not talking about you know, the upper echelons of uh, conscious consumerism and beautiful pieces that will last decades or whatever. I'm not there yet. I don't currently really have an interest in going there. Um, you never know about the future. More specific to makeup, 
but it would affect other things as well. A general guideline of waiting for the perfect release. If I'm desperate, fair enough. If I run out of mascara and I just go and buy a random mascara and I don't love it, that's fine. I'm going to use it a lot anyway. It'd have to be like abysmal for me to maybe not use it up, but like use it for months. Um, it'd have to be truly abysmal. Um, you know, what else would I buy? Random stuff of and not be too fussed. Socks. Well, no, no. I <laughs> Um, but you know, some basic thing I really need, whatever. But in general, I want to wait. Not for, ooh, Catrice happens to have new makeup out. I love Catrice. I should try some because it's new or lots of people are talking about it. So I should try some. No, there are things from Catrice, for example, which aren't available in Ireland, which I've gone out of my way to order online that I regret. But there are also things that I'm so glad I did. And those were releases I was extremely excited about. So I want to wait for those releases to come out and still place that order. But instead of wasting half of the order on stuff that I was only getting because other people were talking about it. I want to get things that I'm really excited about. And like the reality is new stuff is coming out all the time. Um... You know, I really like the Natasha Denona Glam palette, but if the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette had existed when I placed my order for that Glam palette, I probably would have gotten the I Need a Nude instead. I think it would suit me a little bit better. Now, I'm not going to wait three years for the perfect release, but waiting, for example, nine months to see if Catrice, an affordable drugstore brand, or Natasha Denona, a very expensive, expensive luxury brand, releases something that's perfect for me and has me really excited is something that I'm very interested in. Obviously, limited editions can be challenging, but for the most part, like if you really want something and um, waiting on it a few weeks in general is going to be fine. Obviously, some indie brand things, whatever, that might not work. But, you know, giving myself time to think about is this something I really want is this the perfect release for me or have I just had it in the back of my head that oh I would quite like um iridescent highlighter and then I see one released and I'm like cool oh that's something I wanted anyway I have to buy it maybe that's not the color you wanted and maybe the reason you wanted an iridescent highlighter is because you saw one Instagram picture from somebody and actually, you could use an iridescent eyeshadow you own to get the same effect for just one picture. And thinking about it a bit more carefully will help. So those are general guidelines. And then kind of a rule is I would like to buy no more eyeshadow palettes than eyeshadow pans I hit this year. So I'm hoping to hit at least six pans in my Project Level Up uh, project pan. Um, and that would mean I could buy six eyeshadow palettes. Now, I'm not going to wait until I hit a pan to be able to buy a palette. I'm kind of saying I could buy six eyeshadow palettes at any stage this year. And if I happen to hit more pans than that, I'll go for it. And part of that, and this is one of the other things is that feeds into the scarcity mindset as well, is that I live in Ireland. It is an island in Europe. Um, we are not the most well connected to the rest of the world. We're quite well connected, but not the most well connected. Some things are difficult for me to physically get my hands on. So for example, if there's a good sale by a US based brand and it's going to kind of cancel out the enormous shipping and customs fees that I would normally pay to import those products, I might order, you know, two eyeshadow palettes in the next few months before I've hit two eyeshadow pans. And I think that's fine. I'm not going to get too worried about that. So let's get into the more detailed rules for this low buy. I'm going to just move things slightly. OK, so the rules for and the general parameters for my low buy. I am hoping to spend no more than 15 euro a week, 65 euro a month and 780 euro a year. I don't know if I really have that much disposable income for fun purchases. I don't really know. 
because I don't keep a detailed budget in my general life. So maybe this figure will actually have to go down, but also maybe it'll go up. Maybe, you know, um, maybe I'm currently in a bit more of a scarcity mindset because I'm recovering financially from Christmas um, than is realistic for the whole year. I'm not entirely sure. This is what I'm setting and I'm going to religiously stick to it for the first three months and then have a check-in. However, after that, I'm not going to have, you know, a, I'm going to do quarterly updates, but I'm not going to have a quarterly outline financially. So for example, if I wanted to spend kind of five months worth of budget at once, that would be unreal. I'm probably not going to do that. But say I decided, okay, I've thought long and hard about it. I want, you know, those huge 28 pan Natasha Denona palettes, whatever, the blue green and the whatever they are, uh, blue purple and the brown green or whatever. I could do that under this project if they're under 780 euro in total and if it's not more than six eyeshadow palettes, which it's not. Um, but also I don't want to do that. And I think it will be helpful to understand why if I tell you which categories are included. So this is not just makeup. This is kind of everything fun that I would physically bring into my home, bar a few exceptions. So categories that are included in my 15 euro a week budget. Makeup. Makeup bags. I love makeup bags. They're a huge problem for me in terms of overspending. Makeup brushes. I have way too many brushes. They're a huge problem. I do think they're a good investment to get brushes you really love, but it's hard to know which ones you'll really love before you buy them. So maybe we should all be swapping brushes with our friends to see what we really love to figure it out. Um, skincare. So that means I really can't, for example, if some palettes I wanted were 700 euro, I really can't go out and buy them today. Because I need to have budget available in December to be able to buy moisturiser if I run out of it. So skincare includes sunblock, it includes lip balm, hand cream, all the, you know, normal facial skincare. All of those things are included. And part of this is for me to try and redress that balance where previously I've tried to, you know, control my makeup spend. But I've let other categories that feel emotionally similar, like the dopamine hit or whatever it is uh, I get from making the pur purchase, feel similar when I go buy a fancy eye cream. Even though like, if I think about it, eye cream doesn't excite me that much, but I get a similar feeling from buying a fancy eye cream than I get from buying makeup. So I don't want to be, you know, overspending in that category where I have some basics that I love they're maybe not the cheapest in the world but like I have like, I know I can get by with very affordable skincare less so sunblock but anyway um so I don't want to just give myself an excuse to overspend on skincare by excluding it from this project even though I wouldn't say I have an enormous skincare overspending problem I have a bit of a hoarding problem um not totally out of control, but just I love to finish two thirds of a product and then let it fester for years, uh, which is an issue. So hoarding half empty bottles is my skincare problem and, and overspending to compensate for monitoring my makeup spending has been a problem. Um, so I think including it in this way will work out quite well. Clothes. This includes socks, shoes. I'm a weirdo, so I had to specifically say Christmas jumpers, Halloween costumes. That's a category that can just get completely out of control. For a casual get together at one of my friend's houses, I'll wind up spending 50 euro on, you know, a green lipstick. I thought I really needed to look like a better witch. Completely unnecessary. So just that has to be uh, noted. Um, in this budget, nail varnish, nail care products, technology. So I'm using this little hobby light here. Um, if I go out and buy a ring light tomorrow, that's included in this because that's another category I could use to compensate for not being able to buy makeup. I could totally go out and buy a 
ring light to feel that dopamine hit of new makeup related purchases obviously it's not directly makeup but um because of this etc i think it could definitely feature homewares home accessories one caveat on this would be if my husband and i decide to for example buy a new appliance like an air fryer then only half the cost would be from my budget because half the cost would be his responsibility now if i decide to go out and buy a milk frother for lattes or whatever of my own accord nothing to do with him i have to pay the whole cost but if we decide to make a more major purchase together then it's half and half or even if we decide to make a minor purchase together it's half and half but i i want to try and think of it more in terms of major purchases because it'd be very easy for me to say like oh adam don't you want a milk frother if the thing is like 10 euro for him to contribute a fiver so it, it's okay with my budget that would be too easy so i want to try and limit that uh but you know if we buy a hoover i'm not taking 100 euro out of my budget <laughs> when I should only have to cover half the cost. Um, home organization, little boxes, so many little boxes. Um, the price really adds up. Had to include that furniture. Again, if there was something we needed, we could split the cost halfway, and only half could come out of my budget. But if I decide, do you know what? I'd love a little velvet puff poof thing to sit on in my room in the spare room or I'd love a different colour bookshelf aesthetically or whatever that I have to cover that whole cost uh, so that kind of means I'm not going to buy furniture because obviously furniture can be more expensive though I got this bookshelf for free uh, from someone who was decluttering but didn't have a car to get rid of it Um, candles such an easy overspent item you're in tk maxx you're in duns whatever you're buying something maybe something you actually need and you're waiting in the queue and you're a bit bored and they have a display of beautiful candles that smell amazing such a problem i have so many lovely candles now ones i've never burnt before because i fell into this trap a few times in the last few years so i need to use all of those up in fact actually i would say candles are on a no buy really because i own so many beautiful candles until I finish I don't know five uh, which obviously will take ages because some of them are huge um decorations of any kind I have a particular weakness for Christmas decorations it's a huge problem <laughs> I have way too many to fit in my home for example travel accessories I know they're downfall of mine I love a packing cube I love a makeup bag I love a like a toiletry bag I love oh this fan folds up for if you were going to a really hot destination I'm not really going to a really hot destination anyway so I kind of have almost every travel accessory I could ever possibly need um so another possible low uh, no buy category but uh, any of those need to be included because that's something where I'll just get excited about a trip and I'll go spend 35 euro without even thinking about it at all on a couple of extra pouches when I have literally dozens and dozens and dozens that I already love um shipping fees parking charges this might sound controversial and strange but if I go shopping so I've set a quite specific rule here if I go shopping specifically I am looking to buy things in these low buy categories so for example I go to Liffey Valley, which is a big shopping centre near me, where you now have to pay for parking, to have a look in Penny's Primark, a look in TK Maxx, a look in Dunn's, a look in Marks and Spencer's, whatever. And I'm kind of, th even if I don't buy anything, if I'm thinking, oh yeah, I, I'll have a look in the makeup section in TK Maxx and see what they've got, then those parking fees come out of my budget. It's so easy to think oh well I only spent 12 euro on this thing in TK Maxx so this cost 12 euro no if I paid for two hours of parking in Dublin city centre which could cost an extra fiver then that thing cost me 17 euro if I order something from abroad and the shipping is 10 euro then that thing really did cost me 10 euro more I think I have to include these charges or else what I'll wind up doing is 
instead of my current habit, which is buying extra stuff to reach the shipping minimum. I won't do that to fit the rules of my budget. Um, and instead, I'll pay the shipping. And actually, like some of the shipping fees for international are like 30 euro. Like they're really, really high. And customs charges are in here as well. So if I order from Colourpop, I pay huge customs and shipping fees. Well, shipping is usually free, but I pay huge customs fees. Um, so that means the cost for me is that much higher. And I just have to accept that. Like, it's not true that, oh, well, the palette was only $15 or whatever. No, it actually cost me 22 euro because I had to pay the charges on top. So I need to just accept that reality in this budget. Um, hair, oh, sorry, stationery, with the exception of my 2025 diary, won't count. Um, and in fact, I am going to include my 2024 diary in these figures. So while I didn't buy it in January, um, I bought it in December, I'm going to include it as part of this budget. Um, so yeah, it's an absolute essential for me to have a diary every year, but other stationery, I could probably not go 10 years without buying another piece of stationery for all the beautiful notebooks, uh, lovely pens, etc. that I have. Um, and you know, we're provided notebooks and pens in work as well, because I have to work physically in my office every day. So that's included, a very easy overspend category for me historically and get overwhelmed if I haven't too many. Probably like some of these books behind me are notebooks, you know, it's an issue. Um, hair care. Uh, so I'll get into it in a bit when I talk about exceptions, but certainly if I, you know, heat protection spray, um, if I decide I need a fancy hair care thing, um, that's part of it. Hair accessories. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If my Revlon One Step Styler um, broke tomorrow, I would go and replace it tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, after it had broken, I would go online and I would order a replacement. I love that thing so much. It's amazing. Not doing, I haven't done my fringe really today, but um, normally it really helps me out a lot. I love it. So that means I kind of have to keep 50 euro free in my budget at the end of the year in case my my favourite hair dryer breaks. Um, if I decide to go buy something else that is included. Fancy soap. So regular soap won't be included. Cheap soap basically. But if I decide, do you know what? I'd love one of these beautiful um, soaps that come in a glass bottle with pictures of flowers or pictures of cherry blossom or pictures of autumn leaves or whatever from TK Maxx. Or we just now have, um, what's it called? Bath and Body Works in Ireland, uh, I think through Next, but anyway, they've just arrived. And um, if I go buy a Bath and Body Works soap, which like, it's not the end of the world expensive or whatever, but it is a luxury for me to decide to spend, you know, four times the price of what I would spend ordinarily on hand soap uh, on that. And similarly with body wash. So like, I've kind of been thinking about the Notorium, um, like I think it's salicylic acid or whatever body wash, uh, which I think would be great. But if I decide to do that, that's a beauty purchase. That's not a like essential hygiene purchase. Um, so if I buy cheap, my ordinary body wash in with my normal shop, that doesn't count. But if I buy fancy body wash, that does count. And I'll know if it's fancy or not. <laughs> um, and I will justify it in updates or on my Instagram stories. Um... Fancy deodorant. I've never been tempted to buy, get into this wild or any of these deodorants that aren't antiperspirants. But if I do, they would be more expensive than the stuff I use at the minute. So uh, that would count as a beauty kind of purchase, as a low buy category purchase. Similarly, I will get like cheap, cheapest or middle of the road deodorant. Actually, I have one right here. This is from Little Little. And it works fine, very cheap, very affordable. So if I buy that, if I buy regular baseline deodorants, that's fine. If I decide to get the, not just the regular Mitchum, the Mitchum that lasts for four days and it does this and it does that, and it's twice the price, three times the price of the other deodorants on the same shelf, 
then that counts towards my budget. That is an extra. That's a luxury. That's a treat. That's a beauty purchase. Um, and also included in the budget is spending, not food, drinks, experiences, but on any of this stuff. Um, and also on like trinkets or, you know, magnets or anything like that. Well, that count under home decor, but still uh, on any holidays within Europe. So holidays within Ireland, holidays anywhere in Europe. Um, that is included in my budget. So what is excluded from my budget? Gifts, gift cards I get from other people, gifts with purchase. Um, if I get a discount, then I'm only including the money I actually spend. I'm not including, um, oh, originally it was 400 euro. No, if I spend 200 euro, then 200 euro comes out of my budget. If uh, people give me a gift card and I actually only spend 150 euro, then 150 euro comes out of my budget. Um, gifts and gift cards for other people don't count. I think mainly because just budget wise, it could become an issue like, I'm not in control of, you know, somebody in work might get promoted or have a baby or whatever. And we're all of a sudden all putting in 10 euro and it could be the end of the budget and I'm running out and I'm not going to turn around and say, no, I won't support your amazing achievement um, because I don't want to waste 10 euro on you that I need to buy myself fancy deodorant or whatever <laughs> or basic moisturiser. Uh, so to be clear, basic moisturiser is in the budget but basic deodorant is not in the budget. Um, spending on long distance holidays. So there's a chance that we might go to the US this year. One of my friends just got married and she's going to have a Northern Hemisphere uh, wedding, post wedding party at some stage this year. So we might go to that and I will set an individual budget for that trip. I think I have mascara. I've had it the whole time down here. Anyway, I will send, set an individual budget for that trip that will be separate from this. I want to be able to buy a bunch of makeup in Ulta if I go to the US. I haven't been to the US since I got into makeup big time. So, um, and I don't want, like it would skew the whole project for that to be included. And I think it would be silly uh, to say, oh, I can only spend 15 euro a week if I'm there for a week or something like that. Um, so I'll set my own budget if I, like it's similarly, I'm not, I don't think it's likely I'll go to Asia. But if I went to Asia and I wanted to go to, you know, Daiso and all these cu cool uh, shops that would have amazing, you know, K-beauty, J-beauty, whatever, um, that I would set my own separate budget for that. It wouldn't be included in this project. Um, haircuts don't count. I don't have a problem with overspending on haircuts. In fact, I have a problem where I'm extremely unwilling to spend money on haircuts. I desperately want a haircut for months and months and months and put it off because I'm worried about the cost. Um, so I'm not including that because it would just encourage me to be miserable with hair longer than I wanted to be for six months of the year if haircuts were included. Salon treatments, nail appointments, etc. Partially because they just are very expensive so it really would run through my budget quickly if I included that and partially because I don't have an overspending problem. You know, I did treat myself for several months last year getting Biab on my nails and I really enjoyed it but kind of between my wedding and my friend's wedding so I had great nails for both weddings um, and I might get that again. Another friend is getting married uh, sorry, I'm just that age where everyone's getting married. Um, I might get that again. I don't want that to be coming out of my budget because I think it's something I don't have a problem with overspending on. Um, work clothes. So I need to wear steel toe boots for work. They are provided. I hate the current ones that are provided, so I don't wear those. I wear ones I bought in the middle aisle in Little Aldi. Um, if I have to replace those, that doesn't count. It's not my fault that I need to buy. That's an essential for me. Similarly, like I don't need any more work socks. But if I were to move to a different job tomorrow and I suddenly needed, you know, the pencil skirt for the business meetings, whatever, then buying one pencil skirt would not be included in my budget. Now, if I decide to go and buy five pencil skirts to wear every day of the week, then four of them come out of my budget because it's not necessary. Um, but say I need to buy, you know, a nice shirt. I, like I own a blazer already, so I wouldn't need to buy a, a pencil skirt, a pair of work trousers uh, and nice shoes. That all comes out of my budget. And then obviously it can mix and match with stuff I already own if that was essential for work. Similarly, 
if it was essential for choir. So I sing in a choir. Our current uniform I have, I don't need to buy anything. But for example, I could need to replace my pop socks that I wear or whatever. That's fine. That's not included in the budget. Also, we might get a new uniform. We're talking about um, changing to a black dress. I'll need to buy that. And in fact, I'll probably buy two because it's really handy uh, if you're on a trip uh, at a multi-day competition and you need to wear your uniform a few days in a row, it's really handy to have two, even to just air out one of them for uh, the middle day to give yourself a chance to uh, come across a bit better. So that doesn't count because I'm not fully in control of that. But I'm not going to I'm not going to mess around with that. If I choose to upgrade my choir shoes, um, which I don't need to do, then that does come out of the budget. Um, body sunblock doesn't count, uh, mainly because it's a me and Adam expense and also because it is, um, you know, a health and safety thing of you should replace it every once in a while um, and it's not that dear and yeah, I don't think body sunblock counts. I've never had an issue overspending on it. Um, but facial sunblock does count because it's very easy to say, ooh, it's an essential, so I'll treat myself to the most expensive. I'm going to fly um, one of the Goop sunscreens from America just for me, or I'm going to fly an amazing Korean sunscreen from Korea just for me, instead of saying, okay, actually, I can get another great Korean sunscreen on a website that ships to Europe um, as standard and it's not out of control expensive. I need to be encouraged to make that sensible decision rather than the expensive decision. So facial sunscreen is included. Um, medicated skincare. So cold sore treatments, or, you know, if I had really bad cracked heels or something like that, um, that would be included. I haven't really had that before, but for example, at one stage, I think after I had my appendix out, I was getting really dry skin on my hands and stuff. And I bought like a Roche Posay um, thicker cream, kind of a treatment cream for, um, I don't know, like maybe people with eczema, ex eczema normally, uh, which I don't have. But um, I kind of needed it medically at that time because of my circumstances. That kind of stuff wouldn't count. There's not going to be much of it. It's probably going to be one or two cold sore treatments throughout the year. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully not more than that. Um, food is not included, including eat and eating out and including takeaway. That is a category where overspending is an issue, but it's very much a me and my husband thing. Um, and I'm not going to just make my own decisions about it. Uh, and it's something I really enjoy. And it's something I do kind of feel is somewhat necessary uh, with my shift work arrangements. Um, experiences, concerts, the cinema, blah -de blah I don't have an overspending problem in these categories um, and I think they're positive things to do so I don't want to be discouraged from doing them. Um, underwire bras, this is a huge scarcity issue for me. I currently have two good underwire bras that are comfortable and still work well. Um, the brand that makes them doesn't seem to exist anymore. I find it very, very difficult to find good ones. So if I were to find a good one tomorrow that cost even a hundred euro, I'd probably buy two of them. Um because it's I have an issue. because uh, I just I have a very big chest. Um so I don't want to then have two hundred euro gone out of my budget really for what is actually an essential purchase for me. You know, like those two bras are on their last legs. So it's a problem, it's not included. Toothpaste is not included. Kind of even fancy toothpastes because if I go for a fancy toothpaste, it's usually I'm like, ooh, Christmas is coming up. I want my teeth to look a bit less yellow or whatever. And I'm spending a couple of euro extra. I'm not out of control. I'm not into any of this nonsense fad toothpastes. And I'm worried about dentists not having any oversight in the production of some of them. Anyway, uh, regular soap not included. Cheap deodorant not included. Um... Yeah, that's everything. So the final guideline uh, about the eyeshadow palettes, I would like to apply that principle. So I want to hit pans and buy that many eyeshadow palettes. I want to apply that same principle to some other makeup categories. I haven't fully delved into exactly what the structure of that would be. But for example, with mascara, 
I really like to have a brown mascara and a black mascara and sometimes it's kind of necessary to have a waterproof mascara or tubing or whatever for you know if I'm going to a wedding or a funeral or whatever um so I think no more than three mascaras is a good rule and in those individual categories um I would love to limit my blush buying for the year there are some categories I don't want to buy anything for the year there are some I want to be a bit looser like individual eyeshadows single like single shadows in magnetic pans um but I also don't want to go out of control so I haven't fully formulated you know should I just let the budget be the guide because they can be very expensive or should I said, okay, do you know what? I'd like to say buy one new big magnetic palette that would fit 30 shades and then I'm not allowed to go beyond that. Some kind of structure like that can be quite helpful, I find, in deciding, okay, I really like this, I really want it, whatever, but do I want it enough to not be able to buy any more? Um, I think that can be a very helpful structure to have um, in these kinds of projects. But I haven't formulated exactly what I want to do for each category of makeup. And with some categories, it's not necessary. I don't have a problem of buying way too many in some categories. Or I don't have too much of a problem. Like, I probably won't buy any highlighters. But if I did, it wouldn't be the end of the world to buy one or two. Uh, whereas one or two blushes is a bit of a problem because I'm totally overwhelmed by blush. So, but I also really love it. So I definitely want to buy two. I don't know. I will think a bit more about that before my next update. So I'm going to update this project or this um, challenge every quarter. So at the end of March, beginning of April will be my first update. I'll be able to tell you about what I spent, what I spent it on um, and how I'm feeling about all of it. Now I might check in beyond that and I certainly might talk about my experience for example if I buy an eyeshadow palette I might talk about it in one of my eyeshadow palette project pan videos um, and certainly on Instagram beyond that but my full check-ins where we go through the numbers I'm hoping to have four during the year at the end of each quarter well so five plus this intro when you include this intro Um, so I do want them to be kind of thorough videos like today I'm sure some of you are bored and have long since uh, left and only the stalwarts are here but um, this is an area that's a challenge for me and I think talking through my thoughts and my feelings is going to be really helpful. I'm sure, I know it's a challenge for loads of people, so many people you know update their stories every day about what they've spent on makeup or beauty items. Um, this is a huge challenge, you know this enormous industry is telling us to spend money all the time um, it, and they're beautiful things some of them are so like intelligently put together and really nice and really enjoyable um, and can be so much fun um, and some of them are a total waste of money they lie about what they are you know they say radiant dewy bloody black because those words are doing well with focus groups but actually it's a MAC product um, they say they've got an amazing shade range, but they're actually not willing to put the money into having uh, shades that are the colour of human beings. Um, so it's a double sided issue um, and it's very challenging to be a person who loves this stuff and, uh, and just exists in the world. Even people who hate this stuff buy this stuff because, you know, particularly cis women, you're told the way you have to look in the world is a bit different to how you naturally look uh, or very different to how you naturally look and you have to do x and y and buy a b c d e to uh, achieve that look and be valued as a person and it's very difficult so yeah I don't think it's weird that this is difficult for lots of us and I definitely want to not be too hard on myself but I also want to have to come here and explain myself if I go beyond the sensible boundaries I've set for my own well-being of not overspending and putting myself into financial difficulty. Uh, it's so stressful to be short on money that you need to pay bills. Like it's so incredibly stressful. Obviously it can lead to horrendous situations of you get kicked out of your house or whatever or your car won't run or whatever it is but um, it's also just even when you do make it through it it's so stressful and that I don't need more stress in my life. I need less stress in my life. 
um, and trying to buy my way out of bad feelings or loneliness is not successful. Um, you know, my palettes don't keep me company. Do they give me sparks of joy? Absolutely. But they don't keep me company. Uh, so I want to encourage myself to stop relying on them. So thank you so much for watching this really long video, possibly boring. Um, and yeah, if you are interested in this topic, if you are doing a low buy or a no buy, I would love to hear about it down below in the comments.